I'm Nicholas McCarthy and you're watching Stingray Sea Music. My musical background is quite unusual, I suppose, for someone who then becomes you know, a professional musician. My parents are both completely non-musical. Uh, they just had you know, normal jobs for a living and, and I had a really normal upbringing without music in my life. The first time I discovered music was when I was 14, which was really late, discovered classical music. I saw a friend of mine playing Beethoven's Waldstein Sonata, one of his late piano sonatas. I just had one of those moments that I was like, wow, this is what I want to do, completely ignoring the fact that I only had one hand. At first, when I started to, to play, and having been born with only my right hand, so I've always known no different. I've always had done everything with my left hand. So from heading straight into wanting to learn the piano to such a high level that is required to, to be a performer, it was certainly you know, not short of its challenges. My friend went to a, a very good music school. So I, I arranged or tried to arrange an audition with, with the headmistress of this school. And that was really the first time a door was firmly slammed in, in my face. And it was purely due to my disability. She, she said she didn't have time to see me. She didn't have time to audition me um, because of, of my lack of a hand. And she said, you know, how can, I, how can I possibly play scales with two hands? I said, well, I can't play scales with two hands. I've only got my left hand. And, uh, and then she put down the phone on me. And that was, that was my first wall and first hurdle that I hit. And it was from that moment, really, I then thought to myself, why am I letting just one single person in all of in the entire world, why am I letting one person tell me that I can't pursue my dream of becoming a concert pianist when they haven't even seen me play? So I decided at that point to audition for a different music school and um, the, the, the Junior Guildhall in, in London. And I didn't tell them about my disability. I thought I'll get in there first and play an audition. And that was the first professional validation that I may have something special. And it was there when, when I studied with my teacher that I was introduced to Left Hand Alone repertoire and the, the 3,000 words for Left Hand Alone that, that exist for that, which I, of course, knew nothing, nothing about. A lot of teachers and a lot of people who are interested in, in piano music would have probably heard of, say for instance, Ravel's Left Hand Piano Concerto, which is probably the most famous work for Left Hand Alone, or possibly Scriabin's Nocturne for the Left Hand Alone, which is a beautiful solo work. But apart from that, people tend not to realise the, the scope of, of what's available for me as a Left Hand Alone pianist. And I'm often told in interviews, well, of course, it's a very small repertoire, and there's me fighting my crusade, telling them, actually, no, there's 3,000 works for Left Hand Alone. And there's around 28, 29 piano concertos uh, for Left Hand Alone. So there really is a huge scope of stuff for me to, to be getting on with. I kind of wanted to, to carry on that tradition of Paul Wittgenstein. Paul Wittgenstein was probably the most famous left hand alone pianist in, in, in history. He was called to go into battle during the First World War and it was here that he lost his right arm. He decided to commission and, and rework and, and arrange pieces that he knew and loved but for left hand alone and he used his position in society to commission all of the great composers of the 20th century to write left-hand piano concertos for him. For instance, the Ravel left-hand piano concerto and Prokofiev's fourth piano concerto and Richard Strauss wrote two piano concertos for him. So he really did pick the creme de la creme of composers of the 20th century to write works for him. And it really is thanks to him that I have a career today because I have access to all of these masters of the 20th century but they all wrote for Left Hand Alone as well. So I really do you know, have a lot to thank Paul Wittgenstein for. One of the things that I was always jealous of, of my, my contemporaries at the Royal College of Music, was this piece by Rachmaninoff, which they, they always used to play. It's a two-handed prelude, it's a prelude in G minor, 
um, Opus 23, number five. And it's one of my favorite piano works. And I used to watch my, my two-handed contemporaries playing this wonderful piece of music and, and be so jealous. It wasn't till last year, a year before last, when I, I decided to have a go at arranging it. And it's got a very difficult, interesting middle section. Sounds a little bit Lawrence of Arabia, you know, you can almost, it's very, lots of imagery. And I reached out to one of my arranger friends, Arta Simero, to say, you know, have you got any ideas on this? Could you lend a hand with this? And he also had been working on, on this arrangement as well. So he sent this arrangement through. So we kind of put both pieces together and, and collaborated on it. And it's a work which I love playing and it's a, a work I play often. When, in 2012, when I graduated and became the, the, the only one-handed pianist to graduate in the, in the college's 130-year history, it was a wonderful moment for me because it was a nice little extra bonus to, to add to my graduation. But also it was quite surreal to then be reading in, in the national newspapers, you know, just the notice of my, of my graduation. It did springboard my career a lot and especially when I then got invited to play alongside Coldplay and, and with the British Parrot Orchestra. That was very much a worldwide platform as we all know from the 2012 Games. It was a, a wonderful moment and, and a, wonderful, a wonderful start to my career having only been a few weeks from graduating and it, it put my name out there to, to people who, who wouldn't have known who I was at that stage. So I'm, I'm eternally grateful for that 2012. Summer of 2012 is definitely a good year. I absolutely love inspiring even one person in a room of 6,000 people. It makes me a hugely happy person. I feel very lucky and very blessed to, to be able to have that side of, of what I do and what I love doing. Mm -hmm.